here for my weekly appointment and it is really, really cold. And my weekly appointment is getting gas every four days. Man, you put so much time and effort into these cars. If you're a BMW guy, you know exactly what I'm going through right now. Just look at my RPM rev limiter. Look at that notification. Oh, it's alright. Things could be worse. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Good morning. Welcome back to another video. My name is Spencer Burke. If you are new here, thank you for clicking on this video. This is completely unplanned. It is currently Saturday morning and it's the weekend after Thanksgiving. And I'm here at Precision Dynamics with Mike because he is a real trooper helping me out today with just a couple things. Mike, officially, I think the throttle actuators gave out. Yeah. It's about time, which we anticipated, right? I think we were waiting for this to happen. It's just a matter of time. The symptoms that I told you, you think it's the actuators? Yeah, so the rough idle, usually with the uh, throttle actuators, you always get the rough idle, higher idle, uh, usually around 800 to 1,000 RPM, uh, really lopy and loss of power. Is that what you're getting? That's exactly what I'm getting, 100%. <laughs> I mean, I tried to turn it off, turn it back on, let it, it cycle. I, I drove for like maybe 15 minutes on the freeway and then it came right back on. Yep. So I was like, I'm not gonna risk this, so I'm just gonna pull over and call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll pull the codes right now and confirm it. All right, we'll find out. So you're connected via Bluetooth to my car running codes. Correct. You can see the distance between here and there. Well, it's not too bad, but it's nice, uh, <laughs> nice little couple yards. <laughs> and you know, all your information's right here. It even shows your production date. Oh, cool. Is there anything else you think it could be from that or is that pretty much thought of actually? No. Actuator. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Out of all the M3 videos that I featured of all those people, they all told me the same thing. Same symptoms, same everything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> right so, when you sent me the picture, I was like, huh, probably throttle actuator. <laughs> and then you told me the symptoms, like, throttle actuator. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I was like, well, there it goes. It's weird though, because my E90, I had 105,000 miles on it. They never went out. I'm pretty sure somebody did it before. You think so? Yeah, I bought sure. it at 50,000 miles, so maybe they did it before That's that? That's usually when it fails, 50 to 70,000 oh. miles. <laughs> well, actually, you have transmission codes. You have cylinder two. Cylinder two. Uh -oh. So. So apparently, as you guys just saw in the last clip on the computer, it said it was actually a coil pack, which was the coil number two. Mike will explain this more, but I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm not sure where I'm gonna replace this in the video, but we're gonna order all new coil packs for the whole setup, and then also we're gonna do throttle actuators just to be safe, because I don't wanna have to deal with this again. So you think that someone before me replaced my coil pack? Well, for sure they did. For sure they did. This is Bosch. Okay, and then that's an OEM one? This would be OEM. So you can tell the difference because the stamp on the top says BMW. Bosch is the people that makes it for BMW, but when they sell it as their own, they remove the BMW engraving. And oh, then so mine's on the right, and then a stock one's on the left from another car. Correct. So you think it's just faulty? I think it's defective, yeah. Defective, okay. So that means we're doing a coil pack video. Yep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's showing all these cylinders right there. Correct. Do you see anything strange? No, they're all within the same range, right about maybe four milliseconds. See no crazy dip, no spikes. So that solved your issue. But if you were to put in the old the coil pack, then you would see some kind of dip or something, right? Um, yeah, it would show cylinder two, which is probably gonna be this one, yeah. Oh, so okay. number two, it's probably dip down or spike up. Okay. So consistency between all of them. Do you recommend replacing all the coil packs at once? I would. Yeah, just to be safe? Just to be safe. Um, well, then again, they have been replaced. But it's like, it could have been a bad batch, just because obviously it failed, so. Gotcha. I'd rather just be safe than sorry and do all the coils. Exactly. I mean, cars idling perfectly, you know? Yeah. So that was it. Yep. If it was throttle actuators, it would still have the check engine light. Correct. All right. Well, coil packs it is. This is why I told you to bring it by so I can scan it and then we'll find out before replacing parts. <laughs> Makes know, it a lot we easier. Don't just go online, research, it's like, oh, it might be this. <laughs> and then spend all this money. Yep. <laughs> e even though it would be good, it's still, I, I don't want to spend all that money right away. Exactly. So we are going to do a coil pack video and also the throttle actuator video probably next week because it's Saturday today. So I'm gonna leave the car here. So I'll check back with you guys in just a little bit. Hey, 
Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. My name is Spencer Burke. If you are new here, wait. I think I already did an intro. Um, this will be random, but today we're gonna go ahead and head over to Precision Dynamics only because we have a couple more problems with the E92 M3, which I expected when I bought the car and I knew I'd be replacing, but I did not know that I'd have to replace the coil pack. So this video will go over the coil packs and the throttle actuators in one video because the plenum is off already and I think Precision is already working on the car. So this is a clip that I don't know where I'm gonna put, but without further ado, uh, it's currently two o'clock and it is Monday, and uh, yeah. I feel rusty behind the camera. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah, one thing too, if you guys didn't know, I actually got a new office that I haven't done a tour at, which I will do a tour soon, I think on YouTube. I'm not sure if you keep up with me on my personal page, but um, yeah, this is my new office over here. This is over at uh, Manny Koshman's place, which he's been a good friend of mine for years, but I'll eventually do a video of uh, kind of talking about my new office and there's a is that a f pista just 48 that's clean nice okay so we're back again more stuff to do to my car. Yeah. <laughs> the last clip that they saw was me here on Saturday, realizing that one of the coils went bad. Right. So if you can, I told them in the video that we're doing coils and that we're doing throttle actuators. Yeah. If you can explain what you've already done so far and what you've seen. Yeah, so I put off your coil, swapped them all out already, all eight of them. Um, and then I put out one of the throttle actuators just so you guys can compare the difference between a genuine one versus VDO, which is the same company that makes it for BMW as well but much cheaper. So um, just, just as a comparison, that's all. So right here, the plenum's off completely yeah. already. So with the throttle actually, just how it works is it's upside down. Um, it's basically just a mechanical item that's also electric. So it's mechanical and electric. Um, the way that it works is, let me place down your new one. Yeah. So this is the old original one. And what it is, is it actually has this little pivot arm that just literally goes up and down. And the way that it works is when you actually apply load with your throttle, it controls it electronically and then mechanically it pulls this up or down, which I will show you inside of here. There's a rod right here that's connected to this. And this, when you actually pull it downwards, opens your yes. throttle. Uh, technically individual throttle body. So at this, you know, it just means your throttle body essentially. And it sits underneath, right? Correct. It sits down here, which we'll show once I pull off the other one. I okay. started the process of removing it, but I'll Explain to everybody, you know, what I unplugged just to get it out of the way. Okay. Um, so how it works is with this throttle body opening, it's going to allow how much air to go in inside inside the engine um, by controlling the amount of air flowing inside that controls your RPM and as well as how high the engine revs up. Now for this car in particular, mm -hmm. throttle actuators is like the, one of the biggest things. Yeah. Why, why is that? Uh, just because it's electronic and mechanical item. Okay. So usually there's certain things that are controlled by just electronics, so like a wiring, but certain things that are controlled mechanically and electronically, you have two possibilities that can fail. So sometimes the throttle actually fails with just the gear inside of it. So a lot of guys will tell you guys, oh, online, you know, just open it up and replace the gears. You can do that, but the module itself can also fail. So do you really want to do double the labor? Because if you're going to take it out, you might as well do it the right way. Exactly. Okay. Just replace it. Yeah. You don't have to deal with it. You can save money by just replacing the gear if that's your issue. Um, but you don't know how long you have until the mechanic, uh, the electronic side of it fails. Um, clearly, it's a common issue. So for me, it's like, you know, spend the extra money and never have to worry about it again in the time that you own the car. Yeah. So I've oh. never seen anybody actually physically replace two of them, you know, twice, oh, okay. ever. I got It's you. only one. So it's a one-time thing and then you're Correct. good. Is there any way we can break open one of the throttle actuators? Yeah, we'll open it up okay. and then I'll show you. Cool. Uh, YouTube and I was like, yesterday or the day before, and I was inspired. You did really well on YouTube. So I was like, I'm going to start one where I can settle them, can it move to the other side where I can actually organize it? Uh -huh. I'm going to go ham. That makes me happy. So we're going to see the inside of an actuator. Oh, nothing really, honestly. Oh, ho, ho. 
Whoa. So this is the infamous throttle actuator. Yeah, so the gears themselves are actually plastic, um, both gears. This is the only one that's actually metal. Mm -hmm. The failure is usually either right here or this other side of it that's controlled. So you can see when I spin it on the other end. So actually, if you actually zoom in right here, you can see it actually wearing down on this so specific the one. Right there. Yeah, because it's constantly moving in you know, gears and it's grinding on each other. I'll pull this one out completely okay. so you can actually physically see. So even right here, if you actually take a look right at this edge, you can see that it's actually worn down right here. Um, hmm. This one's not that worn down, but you can see how like it kind of gets, you know, worn down. And, and a lot of those will get even more worn down with more mileage. Yeah, higher mileage because it is plastic. Yeah. Maybe I'll develop one that's metal. Make your own throttle actuator? No, just the gears. Because oh. if I can make this in metal, like a billet or, you know, aluminum, then that issue goes away. Hmm. That's interesting to see the inside of it. Yeah, why is there two? Because there are two banks? Yeah, there's two banks. Okay. Oh, no, this one? You mean on here? Well, why is there two throttle actuators? Oh, so yeah, two banks. Two banks. Yeah, control one on each side. Okay. Uh, so the failure usually happens with this, because this is actually the mechanical that's electronically controlled. It's actually an actuator. So it spins right here, but sometimes this motor wears down. They don't sell just this motor. So oh. either this fails, these fail, which is, you know, this is what people mainly replace as well as this. Um, but sometimes the board itself can fail. Oh, so there's, this is the electronic part. Correct. And then this is the plastic part. And then there's the mechanical, mechanical yeah, electronic yeah. motor. Oh, so there's a lot of potential, potential for it to go wrong. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting to see. And action. All right, so I already started removing all the stuff that's in the way just to kind of get it out of the way so we have more room to lift it up. Um, now, uh, actually, plug that back on. So what we do is we actually unplug this, which is actually one of your coolant temperature sensors. Uh, unplug this. And then you got another one right here. Unplug this one. And then I unplug this one right here. So pretty much anything that's connected on these wires right here, unplug them all. So this is unplugged. This goes to your oil pressure sensor. And then on this side, this goes down onto your AC compressor. And this is your vanal solenoid. So I remove those out of the way just so we have more room. Um, there's a 10 millimeter nut here, 10 millimeter nut here. Then you got another one back here. And then one more right over here. So there's four 10 millimeter nuts in total. I don't touch anything here just because we're lifting it up just to get it out of the way. Then one of your O2 sensors, which is right here. Um, you, well, it's not really O2 that, you know, it's like right there. This mm -hmm. goes all the way down below. Mm -hmm. Unplug this end of it right here, pop it out of the way. Once you got that out of the way, remove these two connectors, which are connected to your throttle actuators, which is right here. And what is inside of the thing right here? That uh, this is just all wires. Oh, okay. It's just to clean it up, you know, to make it look nice. Okay. So once you remove these two connectors, as well as all the other ones that are in front of it, we're able to lift this up high enough. And then we can actually just remove the three bolts, which let me show you, are here. One here, one on the back, and one on the side. Just three T uh, T30s. Remove those three bolts. Don't try to pull the bolts out. Leave them inside of here. Literally just sitting in here and then when you pull it out pull it out with the bolt but then when you reinstall you're gonna put it back in and then reinstall it with the bolts in there if not i mean i have small hands i could probably reach in there but imagine trying to reach your hand inside of here and putting the bolts in there yeah you don't want to drop it's, those or yeah. try to get to those at all <laughs> exactly and then i have a special tool which you don't have to use this but um you'll use a pop clip tool or a flathead and these rods let me pivot this out of the way real quick these rods are actually going to be, um, let me pop this side off. So the other end of it looks just like this. Wedge it on here, and then we're gonna pop it off like that. And once we pop this off, it's kind of like the uh, height sensors with these cars for your uh, self-leveling headlights, same concept. And then once you actually reinstall it, because you can't see it once I do it in there, um, you're gonna place it on and just push it in, that's it. And you guys can see the process of it. I already removed the one just to show you guys a comparison between the old one and the new one. So we got one over here. I'm gonna leave the bolt in it. And then we got another one. Let me actually light this up so you can see it real quick. Okay. So you can see the bolt that I'm doing right here. Right there. And then 
now leave the bolt inside of it. And then there's one more that is right here. Like that. And then we'll lift this up and over a little bit. And then we're able to grab the actual actuator and oh, it's a little caught. It's like heart surgery. Yeah. So you can <laughs> see how I remove it and I leave all the bolts in it. And then once it's off, I take off the bolts. Like that. And then reinstallation. We're going to place this one down. Oh, actually, here's a comparison with the uh, OEM BMW versus VDO. It's the same thing. Just the company just doesn't stamp it as BMW. Kind of like the coils. Is there any difference between these actuators or no? No, no. zero difference. They make these, uh, this company actually makes it for BMW. Oh, okay. But they sell it as their own. Now, how come you don't take out all the that wiring thing right there? You can, but it's just a lot more work. You gotta unclip all of that, remove the secondary air pump. Um, at that point, you're probably spending double the time just to remove all of that. So it's, easy, it's easier just to squeeze it through there? Literally, okay. like so much easier. Okay. So. And that's why you leave those bolts on there too. Correct. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to place this down right here real quick. Lift up the back end of this like that. And that allows us to lift this up high. Can we see that? I want to see down in there. Yeah. And that's where they sit, right? Yes. So that's right in the center of the motor. Yep. Right in the dead center. Then I feed it from the front like this. And then slowly wiggle it in. that then we're going to bring it down and place it right back where the holes go with that and then take out your extension with the t30 and do them by hand please guys don't shoot these on or force them on it's aluminum block aluminum bolt you might strip it and is there a certain torque you have to do yeah so we're going to Snug them real quick. We're gonna probably torque it down. Um, I gotta look at the torque spec. Torque spec's not gonna be that high. Should probably be like, you know, eight millimeters if that. You can actually see the selector right here. We actually gotta get this back on here now. But when you try to put it on here, it won't reach. What you actually gotta do is actually push the rod like this, push it down, place this right on it. So see how I'm holding it with one finger? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go like this, slide it over, get that on, and then we're gonna pop it on now. Oh. And got that's it. it. It seems like it's really snug in there. It is. It's tight. It's a tight fit. Yeah. Is there a way that you can explain if you if you just hold up one of the actuators to show how it works? For demonstration purposes, I flip this rod around just to show you guys. Um, this side is going to sit just like this. Um, obviously, they won't work because of the direction that this is going to go. So this is you just showing what it would sit like, but flipped. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how it works is this is actually going to pull it downwards, but in this case it's going upwards. Um, it won't work, but demonstration purposes. I will pop this in like that. When this actually controls it electronically, the motor inside of there, which you guys just saw, spins the gears. And the gears actually spin this other end of it, which actually pulls this, right? Mm -hmm. When it pulls this, it actually pushes this, and it actually goes like that. So. So it literally does what it says is throttle yep. actuator. Literally. Okay. <laughs> so seeing the inside of it and seeing it now, this makes it makes much more sense to me mm -hmm. on how this thing actually works. Yeah. So that makes a lot more sense now. But the thing is it sits really deep in there. Yeah, so it sits one over here forward a little bit and one on the opposing side. Uh, the reason for that was just because that's the only space that they have available to put it. You don't want to have it all the way over here where all the heat's at. Um, there is a lot of heat that, that's down here as well but it's out of the way. This is a fresh unboxing? Yeah. Oh. It's like Christmas morning for <laughs> your, your maintenance nightmares. This comes packaged pretty well. It doesn't damage it. And this is for uh, static purposes. So it doesn't damage the electronic boards. And how many miles are these rated for? Um, I've seen them fail at like 60,000 miles. Really? Yeah. It really, you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like rod bearings, you know? You never know. Ooh. 
shiny. <laughs> well, actually, they all come out pretty clean, even when they're old, mm -hmm. just because uh, of the location that it's at. So now this is the left side, right? Correct, the passenger one. Okay. And is there any different technique than what you did to the first one? No, exact same thing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing. The positioning is the opposite. It's going to go this way. That one I installed this direction. Okay. The passenger is going to go this way. So same thing. Um, what I do is I lift up the back end right here and here. And then I lift it up. And then I grab the front. That will allow me to lift it up a little higher. And same thing. Um, the, uh, this direction. And feed it through. See, it's actually not that hard. It seems like as long as you know what to move and not break anything that you can just... Yeah, don't force it, it. You know, just take your time and eventually it'll go in. Um, and then just make sure like when you reinstall it that these connectors aren't caught like that one. Yeah. So move it back out of the way. And then what we're going to do now is make sure that I have it in the correct position. So let me see that. Thank you. Go here. And the same thing. So we're going to grab our tool extension with the T30. And you're going to start it all by hand. Now reinstallation is literally just grab the connectors, clip them back in. I always do the throttle actually just first. So from this point now, it's just reconnecting everything? Yeah, literally. Um, you can't really mix up connectors because the uh, distance that it has available. Yeah. It's not nasty. I don't remember where all these connectors go. Just kidding. <laughs> just start plugging. <laughs> if it works, it works. <laughs> okay, so I got them all plugged back in. Um, we connected this one. Um, then we connected this one, this one. Then I removed the vanos, which is right here. And then AC compressor, which is down there. Um, oil pressure one, which is right here. This one goes back onto your intake manifold. So that's left off like this. And then now we got the 10 millimeter nuts that we're going to put back on, which is... So now that the actuators have been replaced, mm -hmm. is there any like breaking period or no. any, you can just drive Zero. normal? Just drive it normal, okay. eat on it, just like how you were, you're good to go. Okay. And then next would be to put all these bolts back on and then the plenum goes back on. Correct. Hey Mark, I'm missing a coil. Missing a coil? An old one. So these are all the old coils? That came out of the car. Now if you can explain what a coil is. All right, so how a coil works is it's the same thing. It takes a, it's an electrical component. There's a board inside of here. Back then, you used to have to have a distribution box, not anymore, um, as well as uh, spark plug wires. This is all built together. Now how it works is it takes the voltage, which is a 12 volt. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably a 20 amp. Um, once it gets, takes that signal, it amplifies it inside of here with a bunch of wind up coils, hence why it's got coil. And the reason behind that is because it creates a magnetic field inside of it, which amplifies the amount of amperage coming out of it. So you're going to take a 20 amp, which is probably not going to output about maybe 120 amps. Um, what it does then is it transfers that uh, energy straight through inside of here, which connects to a spark plug. And that's going to allow that electricity to flow through. Um, a spark plug has a little bit of a gap. Every spark plug needs a little bit of a gap, a specific amount for every car to be exact, uh, based on compression. Um, and then once it actually takes that energy, it has to go from one end of that spark plug and it has to jump to the opposing side. But with that spark, it's going to ignite the field that's inside your cylinder. So that's how you get your firing order and combustion. Now, as far as these coil packs, I personally haven't seen too much on these, Yeah. but these are pretty common to go bad, right? Common on all cars to be exact. Oh, really? Um, coils, not as much as back then with like, you know, distribution box as well as spark plug wires. Um, those were more common. But nowadays with coils, they usually last around like 60 to 100,000 miles. I've seen them last even longer. Okay. But we both already know that this has been replaced before. Somebody replaced it with Bosch ones. And we know too, because we ran codes on the car and it showed that a coil pack went out. Yeah, like literally one of the codes says uh, ignition coil cut. And <laughs> so what's the reason behind them failing? Is it because they're mechanical or how does that work? Electronic. Um, for yours, in this instance, it was actually a defective coil. Oh. Yeah, because it's been replaced. Okay. So 
clearly your car doesn't have that many miles on it so it's actually defective so bosh if you're watching this <laughs> just letting you know <laughs> something happened and then the ones you put in are those ones right yeah so these are the ones that are made by bmw remy Okay. Um, they make the coils for BMW as well as Bosch. Bosch used to make it for them before they um, were converted to LCIs. Um, so those, these are kind of like the older versions. Bremi is the revised version. Okay. So. Is there any way you can show us one of the new coils that's yeah. in right now okay. and how you can install one? Yeah. Cool. Take my little special tool. Uh, let me get a light though. If coils do go bad on somebody's car, I want people to know like yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah. So how it works is it's you know, eight of them, four in each bank, one over, uh, four over here, four over there. We already have the intake plenum off, which is pretty easy to remove. Do you have to take that off to replace coils? Uh, no, you don't. It's just easier for us to show There's you guys, room, but you yeah. don't have to. You gotta take off the air box for sure though. Okay. This side air box comes off. That side, we don't touch anything. It all comes off. We pull off the little cover. Um, there's a little uh, connector tab right here. Push on it, it'll lift up the other end, and then wiggle it, that's the trick, it comes off. Once you remove that, you can actually grab down here. And then I use like either flathead or something like this and go right here and wedge it and then pull it up together. And once you actually, don't, don't just force this out. Slowly go out. And then that's it. Okay, so that's a new coil right yep. there. So it's not that hard. No, it's pretty easy. So same thing. It's supposed to uh, have a stamp from BMW here, but they kind of grind it down to take it away. Gotcha. Okay, and that's a coil, that's a coil pack then? Yep, okay. ignition coil. Ignition coil, yep. okay. So reinstallation, uh, that's the tricky part. A lot of guys are just gonna place it on here like this and push it down. And they're like, all right, it's in. It's not, it needs to go all the way down. I put my palm on it, push, and then go here, click afterwards. All the way down, like literally as much force as you can, push it down because you don't want it to pop back up with vibration. Yeah, so. and there's a lot of vibration that happens in here. Yeah. Just stand on it. <laughs> Put your whole weight on it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. And then okay. we connect. Just cool. like that. Cool. We're supposed to do the thermostat, right? Yeah. But you said it was replaced? So the thermostat, we're supposed to do it, or we were talking about it, if you haven't done it. The reason why is because if you're doing throttle actuators, which is right here, intake plenum has to come out, but with it already being out, thermostat's right here. There's only three 10 millimeter bolts holding it. Um, but I can see on the top of the head that they're a little worn down, so it's been replaced. It has been replaced. Yeah. And what is a thermostat? So thermostat is going to control uh, coolant passage. Um, no matter what, you're going to have a certain amount of flow through it. But when a coolant thermostat fails, it actually stays opened. Um, when it, that actually happens, it takes longer for your car to cool or warm up, and it won't stay at operating temperature. Especially now you're going to Florida where it can be freezing cold. You want it to be functional mm -hmm. because if it actually is stuck open, it will never fully warm up properly. Okay, so you want to make sure that that's not yeah. worn down or broken Correct. or anything. Okay. So it's essentially all it is a coolant regulator, as, as I would say. Okay. Um, it's just going to allow how much air, uh, coolant flows through it, which allows it to flow through the system. So it goes from one end, which is, uh, this is a return. Uh, where is it? This is a return. Okay. This is the feed. So it's going to go from underneath the radiator, go back up, go in here. Thermostat opens flows back through here into your radiator, allowing it to cool your engine. Makes sense. Now, the last thing, I'm hoping that this is the last major maintenance thing I have to do. So let's name off what we did. We did rod bearings. Okay. We did throttle actuator, spark plug, coils. Fuel breather valves. Yeah, fuel breather valve, which we did last time. Yep. And then... The last thing I can think of, besides the thermostat, well, maybe the water pump too, but also idle control valve? No. No? Not very common. Okay. Remember last time you told me about that? I'm yes. Like, not I very remember. common. I remember you telling <laughs> me that. That's just kind of like a big thing on the forms. Yeah. Okay. It, it happens, but it's rare. Okay. It's not like something I would say, oh yeah, do it now, just because you're already there, you don't want it to fail. So now with this car, if people go back and look at all the previous videos that we've done, and in general, this car is good to go. Yep. Okay. Well, good enough for your drive as well, and as long as uh, you probably own the car for. Yeah. So I know you're probably own it for a while. I'm gonna have it for a while. Yeah. After doing all this, yes, 100. <laughs> percent It definitely isn't cheap. <laughs> no, it's not. But okay. And then, if um, rough estimate, if someone yeah. comes to you and wants throttle actuators done, where does pricing start at usually? So the throttle actuators, it, it's kind of weird because prices change on them. Um, I know FCP Euro has them for like two throttle actuators, like. 1200 or 1300 plus tax um, and then labor we only charge 250 because so. as you can see it's not 
too much yeah. that you have to do, but there is a lot involved with moving things around. Correct. Removal of parts and reinstallation, it's not about the difficulty of it. You know, it's pretty easy to do. It's more about the time that it takes. And people are paying for your knowledge because you know how to properly do it. Correct. Because there's probably 10 different ways to do this, yeah. but you could end up breaking clips or stripping wires or whatever. Yeah. You know how to move everything around where it doesn't break. Yeah, like re without removing all this. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so the last thing you want to do is break that you know, secondary air pump and, uh, oh, there's another thousand yeah, dollars. you don't want to have that. <laughs> all right, well, let's get everything back on and see how it is. Yeah. So as you can see behind me, I have my M3 completely finished and good to go. So what happened was, is uh, we had to go through uh, a coil pack issue. Something happened with the ignition coils that we had gotten and uh, you know, it's a long story, but thankfully we ended up getting the car sorted out 100%. So right now, the car has a laundry list that I can name off of everything that we had done. I'm actually gonna turn the car off really quickly just because I don't want to waste gas. So if you guys didn't know, I'm actually opening up a second location for my marketing agency in Florida, which I believe is 3,000 miles that way. 80 miles that way is San Diego where I grew up. We're in Orange County right now, and 3,000 miles that way is Florida, which is where I'm going to be living in less than 20 days. So one of the things I had to do was I had to figure out, okay, what does this car need in order to survive in Florida? Um, it rains a lot there. And I'm also gonna drive this car out there only because I wanna do a full road trip in my M3. I just think it's kinda cool. It's a 3,000 mile road trip. Who wouldn't wanna do that? So I'm gonna go see how that goes. So one of the first things that we did, actually, this is the last thing we did. It was just one of the things I forgot about. We have brand new windshield wipers on the car. So there's brand new windshield wipers and also we filled up the windshield wiper fluid all the way, which I know it's small, but it's, it's something that I was excited about for some odd reason. We also did some coating to the car. So Mike spent a couple hours coating everything out. And if you press the unlock button, the mirrors now fold out and also the windows go down automatically. Now the windows do go down automatically from the factory, from what I understand, but the mirrors don't. So that was programmed in. We also programmed in to when you hold the lock button down, mirrors fold in and windows go up, which is another coding special thing that I absolutely love because I always got out of my car and press that button to fold the mirrors in just to be safe because I don't know if a car next to me is gonna rip one off on accident. So having this key just to do that is so damn nice. Another thing they did too is that if you guys look back there, there's a little silver thing and that usually will push this seat belt to right here. And I don't know why, but it doesn't catch anymore. So Mike coded that out so I don't have to deal with the silver thing pushing all the way out here when it's like completely useless. So he coded that out to stay in. And then also if you look at my speedometer, my car is on and there's not one single light. So TPMS is gone. The EDC light for my suspension is gone because I have aftermarket coilovers on this car. So I have I have EDC in this car, which basically means you can control the suspension like the dampening. But since I did coilovers, it was throwing a code. And every time that I would basically go into my car, it would have codes in it. So there's no more lights anywhere here and it feels amazing. And also when you open the door, there was like this really annoying chime that wouldn't go away. Um, because you have the door open or when you have your seatbelt off, which I wear my seatbelt all the time It's just nice not to have that chime uh, and it just makes it better because you can leave your door open If you're working on your car and it's on it's not making that really annoying BMW chime So all that has been coated out, which is amazing Everything still works so if I do end up getting like a flat tire or something happens It still works, but Mike was able to code all of that out So now if you guys take a look at the engine it looks like a normal engine but underneath as you guys have seen in this video, in the previous videos, and all my YouTube videos I've been doing on this car since I got it, there's a lot that's been done underneath the heart. The heart of the car has been very, very well taken care of, and I'm very happy with where it's at. So underneath all this, right in the center, there's two new throttle actuators. Behind that would be a brand new fuel breather valve, which caused idling issues for me, especially when I filled up. So if you're watching this now and you have idle issues with your car, check out my fuel breather valve video. There's also four here and four here, brand new OEM ignition coil packs on the car. So it feels amazing. And then underneath the engine, 
would be all new rod bearings and also here and here are new motor mounts which the car feels so much better there's no more vibration and then also in this is brand new spark plugs which in all the last few videos that i have filmed i documented all that of which ones we used why we went with them and explaining pretty much everything behind it so as far as the maintenance goes on this car it's pretty much good to go if you're new here i'm very open and transparent about this but with this car I spent a good amount of money making sure that it got to the point where I wanted it to be um, to make it to Florida and just to be able to modify. So I'm going to answer a question that a lot of people have asked me. How much have you spent on getting this car to where it's at? Actually, you know what? Sorry guys, the audio's been kind of bad. I'm going to put this on. A lot of people were asking, how much did that cost? Because I did rod bearings, throttle actuators, all these big, big things that are such like the myth or like the things that you have to do to these cars, which you really have to. If you look at all my videos, it justifies why these parts go bad and why you need to replace them. So the plan that I have is to, yes, modify the car. I want to do a lot more to it, but I had to get those first things taken care of. I didn't want to have any issues with this car where I'm driving to Florida and it breaks down halfway, or I even try to like do a supercharger or do a stroker kit or whatever I do. And there's all these stupid little things that get in the way. Um, when I built my E30, when I built my E90, I would say the momentum of going into those builds was always like, how can I get more power? How can I make it fast? And I never really thought about maintenance. And then out of nowhere, you'd have a huge issue like rod bearings or for instance, my M20 on my E30, I blew all the rocker arms and I didn't realize that maintenance is so damn important. Me sharing this information, I hope helps you guys understand that when you buy a car, how much to put aside or how much you're probably going to have to spend to get it to work to the level that I would want my car to operate at where you can modify it and not worry about it and push it hard. I'll be very clear with this. I have worked a deal with Precision Dynamics on how we do trade work and also the parts that were installed on the car. Um, everything is always linked in my bio or linked to somebody where there's value behind it. So I'll give you guys a retail price of what I would think this would cost roughly for anyone out there who wants to just get all this done at once. So to get an E90X to complete perfect standard where you have actuators done, you have the rod bearings done, and you have all those little things that catch the car off guard or will catch you off guard financially and with your time. I would say I'm gonna wait for this truck to pass so it's not awkward. He's looking at me and he's gone. Okay. <laughs> One thing about vlogging that's kind of awkward. I would say you're gonna spend between five to six thousand dollars roughly on the labor and the parts themselves to get it to a point where you don't have to worry about anything. The car can be pushed, you can have fun with it. As long as the car was clean in the first place, you're good to go. So that's gonna do it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you can, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I don't ever ask often for it, but if you guys can, hit the thumbs up button please subscribe and if you want to check out my Instagram accounts I have everything linked below and I just I'm having so much fun sharing this journey of building this car and not just that but general E90X help of giving advice on what parts to use and how to install it and DIY and all that stuff so Mike at Precision thank you so much man the car feels so damn good I appreciate it so much thank you guys for watching I'll see you in the next video peace